belonging family of God. Oh, you're just getting out of bed? Let's try that again. Good morning, family of God. That's better. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ, the perfecter of our faith. We welcome you to this eighth Sunday after Pentecost, and we're glad that you are here to give praise and thanksgiving. Um, we have a beautiful sanctuary, and we have guests today. Uh, Tom is here, who has been a part of this church, and uh, the reunion happened. The reunion, reunion happened, so we're grateful. We're grateful that we're going to hear from this One Voice Quartet in a little bit later. For those of you who are online for the first time, we greet you as well with a warm greeting, and we know that you have many choices to make online, and you have chosen to be a part of this worship service, uh, fellowshipping, worshiping God uh, with this beloved community called Covina United Methodist Church. God is good. And all the time, come, see, and taste the goodness of our Lord. Let your religious ways fall. You want to stand them? Ask them to stand up. Oh. Let's start all over. Okay. Can oh. you please rise for the call to worship? Sorry about that. Okay. Let your religious ways fall. Let your closed attitudes fall so we may worship in spirit and in truth. Let our hearts be filled with the goodness of the Lord. Let our preoccupations fall. With a mighty shout, give glory to God. Please stay standing for our opening prayer. Lead us, O oh God, to appreciate the plenty you have entrusted to us and to ponder the meaning of this bounty for our shared life of faith. As you have raised us with Christ, help us to think not according to our society's agenda, but as people already living in your realm, where all are loved and valued and honesty reigns. May we hear your prophets when they have a word from you for our day. Amen. And please stay standing for the opening hymn.
Okay, the epistle lesson for this morning comes from Colossians 3, 1 through 11. The new life in Christ. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idol idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, enslaved and free, but Christ is all and in all. Uh, please stand, if you can, for our gospel lesson. The gospel lesson today comes from Luke 12, verses 13 through 21. The parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Hey, be to God. Sky. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, 
Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an A lad, times were hard and things were bad, but there's a silver lining behind every cloud. Just poor people, that's all we were, trying to make a living out of black land dirt. We get together in a family circle, singing loud. Though the circ, Mama sang tenor, me and little brother would join right in there. Singing seemed to help a troubled soul. One of these days, and it won't be long, I'm gonna join them in the song. We'll get together in a family circle, singing loud. Though the circle won't be broken, by and by, Lord, by and by. Daddy sang bass, Mama sang tenor, me and little brother would join right in there in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Some glad morning. Tom Cole, you can come back anytime. Pray with me. Almighty God, whose word is a living, active thing, Make us ready to listen, give us grace to change, and make a difference in our neighborhood, in our city, in our world. Give us faith to share your holy word and not be afraid. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. We all have trouble letting go of our possessions. I must confess that I'm a bit of a pack rack myself. I often wonder, when will I have time to unpack my stuff? Things that I have accumulated, right? All my life. And when I'm called, when I, uh, when am I going to unpack all of this stuff? When I'm called to move by the bishop several times. I keep reminding myself that I'll get to it. I'll get it done, downsize, once I retire. So let's see if that goal is going to be made, made. For some, this compulsion to accumulate can become a mental disease, appropriately called disposophobia. 
Disposophobia. There's even a TV show about it. Hoarding buried alive. Have you seen those reports, right? The camera goes into the homes so unbelievably cluttered that it's to move from room to room to room. The clutter moves from room to room to room. Jesus told his followers, avoid greed in all of its forms. A man may be wealthy, but his possessions do not guarantee him his life. When Jesus sent the disciples out to preach the good news to the surrounding villages, he told them to travel light. I preached on it a couple of weeks ago. Travel light, wearing only the clothes on their back. Known worldwide for his reputation as an astute businessman, industrialist, and philanthropist John D. Rockefeller was also wise in listening to the advice of the author of Colossians, our first reading. And I'll say more about first Colossians, uh, Colossians later on. And of Jesus' gospel from Luke. As regards wealth and its ac accumulation. From the time he was a child, Rockefeller believed that it was his purpose, purpose in life to make as much money as possible and then use it wisely to improve the life of humankind. In 1862, he founded Standard Oil Company and eventually became the world's richest man and the first billionaire. Not one to hoard his wealth, Rockefeller spent the last 40 years of his life creating foundations that had major impact on medicine, education, and science research. Careful to avoid the spotlight, Rockefeller made aware that wealth brought forth privileges and pitfalls. On one occasion, he shared his misgivings with a reporter from the Chicago Daily Herald, who said he often wondered whether friends liked him for himself, just the way he is, or liked him because of his money. He claimed to have only a few golfing partners because, as he puts it, I have made experiments and nearly always the result is the same. Along the ninth hole come some propositions, charitable or financial, he says. When Rockefeller died at the age of 98, someone asked one of Rockefeller's closest and trusted aides how much his boss had left behind to his foundation. The aide replied, he left all of it, all of it. Born Wazio Valentino Liberace in 1919, the flamboyant pianist became the highest paid performance performer in the world. At the height of his popularity, he netted $5 million a year and spent it on lavish excess as having a replica of Michelangelo's creation of man, the scene from the Sistine Chapel painted on his bedroom ceiling. You, you recall that, you know, when the, the creator and human being is touching in their finger, right? He had it painted over his, his ceiling. When Liberace died in 1987, he left behind eight overloaded warehouses full of stuff that could not fit into any of his fully furnished residences. Although many of us will probably not occur enough to compare with Rockefeller or Liberace, each offers a lesson that may help us to respond more fully to the challenge of today's gospel. A man wanted Jesus to act as an arbiter to settle a dispute over property between quarreling brothers. It happens, folks. I've seen it as a pastor. I've come in between families to mediate, <laughs> reconcile. One time I even had to go to court to testify, I was, I was summoned. 
So it happens, right? Between quarreling siblings. Jesus did not hesitate to critique anyone who would put material wealth as the highest priority. Jesus came with a message that challenged such possessiveness. He didn't advise people to tighten up their defenses or secure their borders. Rather, Jesus invited his community to understand that God longed to offer saving grace and new life to people to every race and nation. He urged his listeners, his followers, not to cling to their land and to their material possessions, but to cling to God, to those things that matters to God. To cling to God who gave them what they have so that they may tend to the needs of others. This rich farmer's preoccupation with wealth has deprived him of cultivating the other values that shows us how to gift, uh, gift others with our gifts and advantages so that others may benefit too. Pride of his own accomplishments has displaced humility and gratitude for the blessings of birth and privilege. Rather than apply mere band-aid measures to the various needs of the poor, disciples and followers of Jesus are to pursue prophylactic measures that will not only ease the needs for a time, but help eradicate the injustice of these needs for a lifetime. I'm sure the disciples repeatedly asked the same question. I asked them myself to Jesus, how long, O Lord, should I help? How long? And the response is, all your life, all your life, a lifetime. And by their generous giving, the disciples would become more like their divine parent God. Give to everyone who asks of you, Jesus said. Do good even to enemies. Lend and expect nothing back. Then you will be children of the Most High. Be merciful just as God is merciful. This historical and risen Jesus of Nazareth is convinced that the only way to achieve true joy, true happiness, and fulfillment is to train ourselves to concentrate on those we encounter in our daily lives, always trying to care for the needs that surfaces in those encounters with others. Such a caring frame of mind normally isn't the first thing that pops up in, a, in our human nature, right? We're often worried about what we can gain from, what, from such relationships, not what we can give. What we can gain rather than what we can give. Oh, what can this person do for me? How will it, this person help? advance me rather than what can I offer to this person? We might believe Jesus' teachings are from God. We might learn everything we can about them and pass even an exam on the subject in our confirmation classes, in our Sunday school, right? But how can we actually acquire a frame of mind that regards wealth? as Jesus does. Yes, we can stand back and applaud Jesus every day of our lives, but if we are not actually living the life he did, we are faking our faith. So it's not a question, this, this parable is not a question about, you know, things that we do good and our merit so that we can go to heaven. Again, it 
It's doing what matters to God most. Caring for our spiritual development, our spiritual self. Engaging in relationship with our brothers and sisters and cultivating our relationship with God. In Luke, Jesus' urgent message of the kingdom of God is reaffirmed. The parameters and riches of God were not, ge were not geo ugh, ge geographical, I'm sorry, geographical or material in nature, but spiritual and everlasting. That's the point of this parable, right? There once lived a man or a woman that dreamed of nothing but gold. Obsessed with possessing gold, he or she thought of little else. One day, he left his home and ran to the market. He ran through the crowd to the stall where a man was selling gold coins. Quickly, he scooped up all the coins into his bag and ran away. An officer who had been standing right next to the table nabbed him and hauled him in handcuffs to the precinct. And as he puts the man in the cell, he said, I can't understand it. There you were, and me right next to you, to the merchant's table. And at least a hundred witnesses, and you stole something right in front of us all? The man replied, I never saw anyone. I only saw the gold. Being employed, carrying a good salary, owning some nice things and enjoying life are certainly not evil things. And yes, we want to care for our family's needs. But they can easily become almost an obsession taking the place of real purpose and meaning. When earthly things become more important than people and blinds us to the needs of other people outside of our family circle, when we begin to define ourselves by them, we need to regain our balance and perspective. This is what Jesus is pointing out. Jesus says, you are not what you have, and if you were, you are in a crisis of identity. You are faking your faith, your, your, your faith. Believers today may need to read them, rid ourselves of the notion that this could never happen to me. With that idea in the back of our minds, many of us continue to live unperturbed by the facts that we will not be here forever. So we will continue to invest ourselves and our fortunes in projects that have no lasting significance. And we tend to think that there will be time somewhere in the distant future when we can make the adjustments and will merit our welcome into eternity. To the rich man who had such an attitude saying, Oh, time will come where I can just sit back and leisurely enjoy my investment and my life, right? Go to a seaside hotel, Hilton or Merriman, and just enjoy. To the rich men who had such an attitude and to those of us who share it, Jesus says, you fool. In the Jewish scripture, fool was the name given to the one who failed to take God into account in every aspect of his or her life. For the fool who compartmentalizes her life and adapts life moral principles accordingly, death will be a rude awakening. The parable challenges friends to choose whether we will spend our energies building storehouses for our possessions or allow ourselves to be possessed by God's love. 
and share what we have and who we are with our brothers and sisters. Now to the Colossians, right? If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. The Apostle Paul is not focusing them from money, unlike Luke, but on other earthly desires that leads us off God's path. This writer says, get rid of such things such as anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language. It is as if the writer is here now calling us to be aware of how the loudest voices in social media and politics can turn us aside from the reality of our siblings in Christ's truly need. Need for love, forgiveness, food, water, and shelter. Colossians speaks to us today reminding us of our baptism in Christ. And in our communion table, our earthly desires are put to death and Christ forgives and frees us, reorients us towards him and creates a new image of the divine in us. Finally, in Disney's Pixar animated movie, Up, one of my favorite animation movie, Up. If you haven't seen it, try to see it. 78-year-old Frank Fredrickson tied thousands of balloons to his home. The house rose above the city. At last, Carl was free to fulfill his lifelong dream to see the wilds of South America. Later in the story, as balloons were lost, he had to jettison, get rid of everything. He had to throw his earthly possessions to keep the house light enough to fly. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, we too need to keep ourselves light so that our faith can let us fly. And so be it. Giver of countless blessings and lover of our soul, deliver us from love of goods, the material things we tend to venerate and adore. Help us to be satisfied with the riches that you provide, your grace, your abounding presence and love, your mercy, joy, and peace. Help us to find your spirit and help us to hear Jesus responding. Come, my brother. Come, my sister. Enter the kingdom of God. Amen.
We are a praying church. We pray for one another and this family that we have here and our neighborhood and our city. And I know that you have been praying on behalf of um, the Hudson family, Guy Vera family, and the Vin Luan family. We continue to also pray for our brothers and sisters who are going through treatments or surgery. Please keep them in your devotional time, in your prayer time, and together in a, as a community of faith, let us have that intercessory prayer. Keep everyone well, strong, and safe. I now invite you to come forward to offer your prayers to God. Loving and merciful Jesus, you told the crowd to guard against greed. You showed us the folly of storing up worldly goods. You taught us that our treasure is not our security, not who we are. Hear now, O oh Lord, our prayers of petitions and intercessions for ourselves, for our neighbors, for the whole world as we struggle with possessions and greed. We pray for your universal church in its calling to live simply and guard against storing up treasures. We pray together, Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our vision beyond our own concerns and to trust that you will care for us and our needs and that we will care for our brothers, our sisters and neighbors and the world around us. We pray for peace where conflict, violence or war are rooted in disparity, in inequity, rooted in the possessions of land. We pray together, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have too much and are reluctant to share it with others. We pray together, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for families torn apart by disagreements about goods or inheritances. We pray together, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those struggling to provide legitimate financial security for themselves and their families. We pray together, Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are conflicted about work or careers focused on consumerism or dubious financial dealings. We pray together, Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who will never have too much, who barely have enough for survival, food on their table, education for children, health care for their families and for the aged, the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the jobless, and the marginalized people. We pray together, Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick among us, those who are going through treatments, those who are waiting for the results of their test, those who are facing surgery, those who are ill spiritually, mentally, physically. Especially we lift up to you, O oh God, those in our prayer list. Touch our brothers and sisters with your care. Lift up their burden. Ease up their pain, O oh Lord. Those who are known to us and those that are unknown. We also pray for those who have passed away, members of this body of Christ. Surround their families, O oh Lord. We will never forget them. They may be absent in the body, present with the Lord. Be with those who are dying, and for those who have died alone, whom we name in our hearts and those that are not known to us. We pray together, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of grace who guides us, who challenges us to question our priorities and values, especially when we are caught up in the mechanics of daily living, you encourage us to keep focus on what it means to live in Christ and not to be diverted by the easy distractions of the world around us. Help us to be rich in all that matters to you. For we ask this in the name of, our be of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As the ushers prepare to come down the aisle and serve us, a reminder that if you are going on vacation, the ministries of our church, the mission of our church continues. So please uh, send that through uh, the mail or um, do your online uh, pledges, so your offering and your tithe. As we have heard today, what matters to God is the purity and the sincerity of our hearts and how we care for one another, not just our family, but our brothers and sisters, those who are in need. Will the ushers please come forward at this time?
Almighty God, loving parent, your patience with our children is beyond our comprehension. How many times have we sung praises to you from whom all blessings flow? And yet, in our lives, in our practice, and in our giving, we've acted like most of those blessings are from our own, to do with as we wish. Often, we have been deaf to your teaching and blind to your leading. May the gifts we give today be a token of our goal to live generous lives that honor you and express gratitude for your goodness to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. for our parish life. There will be a coffee hour or a reception immediately after church. Um, Diana Thorne uh, wants to do a reception for the church on behalf of her beloved Mark, who um, we brought to his resting place this past Tuesday. So join in greeting Diana. Next week... We will have a very special guest. You have met her once, uh, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Eunice Ilya has been itinerating. You know, for some of you, I, I believe that there's a, that's a new word. It's a it's a United Methodist word. We are called itinerant preachers, right? Because we're sent out by the bishop, and so she has been itinerating in Southern California. In all of the churches, not all, but many of the churches, every Sunday she's been preaching. Um, and uh, she was in Arizona also preaching. And today she got picked up from my house to preach at Rialto United Methodist Church. So Sunday she will be here to preach, to bring the good news to us and co-celebrate, co-officiate uh, Holy Communion uh, with me. Right afterwards, after we will have a reception, um, she will continue to itinerate in the month of August. In fact, she will be in Atascadero and the northern part of conferences, and then we'll leave the first week of September going back to Nigeria. Why is she doing this? I don't know. Maybe uh, I need to remind that we have a relationship with the children of Africa, our annual conference began with Bishop Toole. You remember the name Bishop Toole? Or maybe even before that, the children of Africa, right? The poverty there as well as, you know, malaria. You remember malaria, malaria nothing but nets? The program, nothing but nets, right? So we do have a relationship with the Nigerian uh, United Methodist Church, right? And uh, she'll talk about, about her work a little bit about her work at the reception. In our reception for her, the um, uh, uh, Mabaguru, yeah, Bar Baraguru will be hosting and uh, our African brothers and sisters, right, will be hosting over there. And so I believe we have a catered Nigerian food coming in. Catered, licensed catered Nigerian food Right, will be served, but we're asking people to contribute $10 so that this licensed uh, nutritionist and um, owner uh, will make a little bit of, of that fun. We're also inviting people to wear your traditional clothes, right? Uh, Nigerian clothes, Ghanaian clothes, Mexican clothes, a Filipino, American, right? American clothes, jeans, t-shirts, whatever it is, right? Or uh, with a tie, whatever uh, is comfortable with you. Uh, the purpose is to celebrate our connection, right, as a global church, the United Methodist Church, and to celebrate life together. So again, she will bring the good word to us. 
The rest of our uh, announcements are printed over there with, uh, again, hymnal dedication still going on. There's, by the way, for those who are inter interested in making prayer beads today and chaplets, um, these are prayer uh, tools, right? Uh, you can join us after the fellowship that it will be at the fireside room. This has been in your bulletin for quite a while. So join us for the Senior Extravaganza Fair. And in the month of August, by the way, uh, American Red Cross will be here, right? So save a life. So um, please do everything that we can together as a beloved community in lifting up one another. I believe that is everything that needs to be lifted up. Let us now pass the peace of Christ to one another. The love and peace of Jesus Christ our Lord be with you. The love and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let us stand for the sending forth Him. Jesus is all the world to me. Friends, Jesus is our true friend. He is there day and night, watching over us, fulfilling the desires of our hearts, and providing for all of our needs. Don't ever forget that when we are close and our heart is in alignment with our God, with our Lord, we have eternity in mind. The inheritance of the kingdom is before you. Come, taste and see the goodness of this kingdom.
Go in the peace of Christ and the love of our G the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit here and now. Amen.